now. We're so busy talking that <laughs> we're getting lost in the the cake's getting lost. So let's just check that we've got all the right things. Ah, so the one the thing that we're missing is we need a hundred grams of ground almonds to go in there. Yeah, I'm just gonna wash my hands. You wash your hands. Them. I shall waste some some almonds to add I can't to just that. Keep wiping them on my apron. No, but well, you can. But it's not very hygienic. What would Florence Nightingale say? Mary Morris talks about washing your hands until they are, they are red raw. Yes. Which sounds familiar, actually. Does it? <laughs> Round almonds? Yep. Can I stir that in? You can stir that in. And then nuts. So, so you have 300 grams of sure. nuts. Yes, or more. Obviously, this recipe was originally in like pounds and ounces. I translated it into... Make it usable in the modern... In the modern era. <laughs> yeah. Nuts. So we've got some Ooh. pecans, some walnuts, no. some almonds, something like that. some Brazil nuts, and some hazelnuts. So we want like 50 grams of each. 50 grams of each, because how many different ones have we got? One, two, three, four, five. So then we can just add a bit more, and then add of, a bit the more of, of the almonds. Yeah. I don't like hazelnuts really, but everyone else again overwhelms <gasps> me. So. Exactly. And I mean, of the nuts that we have, hazelnuts is one of the sort of guaranteed traditional nuts. That yeah. Is one of the few that actually grows in the UK. It's not very tidy, it's okay. Am I not? What did I do? I just, tr just chucked things back down. Trying to collect all the rubbish in one corner. She wouldn't have had pecan nuts because we they just they didn't have them in the UK. They're American. They're North American, thing. yeah. So, but, but walnuts. She had from a uh, walnut tree. Oh, she had a walnut tree? Yes. I'd love to have a walnut tree. She was friends with the gardener at the school that she yeah. was at because she always loved plants and things. And he gave her a little walnut sapling yeah. which she planted in her parents' garden. Mm. And then, um, but it takes ages before a walnut tree starts being reproductive. But by the time I was a child, yes, we loads got of walnuts. loads of walnuts from that walnut tree. Have a walnut tree. And um, so walnuts are not a native British tree, but they were brought over by the Romans, so they've been around. They've been around a long time, and hazelnuts are native. Brazil yeah. nuts are from South America. I'm going to just put in a few more Brazil nuts. And we tend to be quite generous because we do like nuts. We like the nuts, the nuts are nice, and a few more. So you don't want them in too big chunks. Basically, as you try to cut it, if you hit a really big lump of nut, you'll just end up sort of pushing down and breaking the cake. cake. Which was another problem that the vegan version had. It wasn't very structurally sound. <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't at all structurally sound. <laughs> yeah, it it. Just kind of, uh, you just kind of had it just collapsed. Oh, so where were we? Yes, so she was out in the sector, as they called it, but trying to maintain the sort of Thomas's kind of standards. Yeah. And, looking and after finishing her training. Patients come from the and blitz. Looking after patients from the blitz and looking after soldiers. Including yeah. sometimes German soldiers? Yes. Which Did that happen to Mary as well? Yes, um, not when she was in Tunbridge Wells, but when she went over to the front, they set up this field hospital and she, mm. she was quite amused by the fact that the first patients that they had were young German boys who were sort of 15 years old, oh. who had been sort of indoctrinated by the Hitler Youth and then left behind as the rest of the oh. army was fleeing and told to keep shooting for the fatherland. They kind of took them in and they were being very um, unpleasant, I suppose. Yes, yes. I think of a way to say it. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, she had that experience of, and I think, they're like, German patients initially being really mistrustful and uh, abusive. In fact, she learned German at school so she could speak to, to them. them in German. Yeah. And try tried to be kind because they were sick people, yeah. same as any other. And then th they would end up usually being very appreciative and courteous. Yeah. But initially they were so convinced that they were going to be sort of taught, you know, yeah. mistreated. So yes, and th these young lads then eventually became, you know, some of her most helpful, because uh, yeah. they were very short-staffed and these, because they couldn't, they couldn't discharge them because they were prisoners of war, effectively, mm -hmm. but they couldn't get them to any prisoner of, of war camps. So they just sort of had to earn their keep, being yeah. sort of runners for the nurses. Wow. And then, yes, and then as the war went on, they ended up getting... Well, I was, no, well, I was just going to ask, so, whereas your grandmother stayed as a civilian nurse because she was training, but Mary joined... The army, so there is a name for it, and it's the Queen Alexandra something, 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 and she keeps saying that she's in the QAs. The QAs. Um, and she, it, actually, it's quite interesting in terms of like the position of women, because there's uh, various references in the book to uh, being sort of um, catcalled and wolf-whistled and so on. Mm -hmm. um, and she says yeah. that when they got to... 
they were sort of driving towards the, the camp and these soldiers yeah. started to wolf whistle at them and then abruptly stopped when they realised that they were in, they were wearing their two pips, which meant that they had a certain army status. Yes, yeah, and they, like, they were the, like officers in effect. Yes. If you were a trained nurse in the QAs, you were like an officer and had to be treated yeah. like one. So they yes, got a degree the, of sort of rank from that. Though. The Queen Alexandra Imperial Nursing Service Reserve. It's quite a mouthful, no wonder I couldn't remember. Wow. That. <laughs> Ros is just adding some more boiling water to the Christmas puddings because you can't let them boil dry. So Mary joined the Queen Alexandra Imperial Nursing Service and went out to these field hospitals and she started in Normandy and then she moved on to Brussels as the front line sort of moved. So this is in sort of 1944 as the, the war has been sort of taken back onto mainland Europe and the, the Allied forces are really starting to push the Germans back but still meeting sort of incredible levels of resistance. And she talks about some very, very difficult experiences that the soldiers were having um, with that. Um, and then they started meeting people who were fleeing the Russians and Germans who were sort of coming to them and sort of begging to be taken prisoner of war by the British because they didn't want to fall into the hands of the Russians. And that really ties in quite well with another book that we've both read, mm. um, A Woman in Berlin, which yes. I can't remember who it's by. Oh, ah, because she was it's anonymous. anonymous. Because she because she writes about being raped or and choosing then to, um, how should we say, kind of like a so, well to yeah. to like basically finding a nicer, slightly more gentlemanly Russian, and kind of like choosing to have a, a relationship with him where she was giving him sex in order to protect herself from being multiply raped by yeah. other Russian soldiers. So it's not really like yes. it's kind of like a, 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 a force trying to protect herself, protect herself. Um, as, as best as she is able. It's like choices that women end up making in, in mm -hmm. war. So that's another um, settled war diary. Yeah. Um, and that's, yeah, well as the title says, it's about her being in Berlin and it really, it, it kind of starts when the war is over and then it, it takes you through the whole of the Russian occupation of her part of Berlin. Yeah. Um, it's really a very um, It's a very powerful brutal, book. Yes. Very, and and um, obviously she needed to write it anonymously because there was a lot of shame yeah. involved. And in the end, she, she talks about sharing that with her, I guess her fiancé and mm. him leaving her as a result of it. Yeah, um, yeah. couldn't understand. Because he couldn't, yeah. So it does. It, so reading Mary Morris's account of people sort of coming and saying, you know, please, <laughs> we surrender to you guys. Um, it, it really makes sense why yeah. they would want that uh, yeah. uh, over the Russians. Yeah. But when you think about how the experiences that the that Russia had. Yeah, and in, it was sort of retribution, wasn't it? It was they were the war. You, you can equally see why those Russian soldiers, yeah, was had such anger towards. Germans that they would abuse German yeah. citizens, even though that's obviously morally very wrong. Yes, but there's I think in 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 both of those books there's a lot that kind of shows you the dehumanizing effect of war yeah. and how yeah. how war really destroys the the people that it affects. Yeah. <laughs> Mary has a fiance who works in a prisoner of war camp, a German prisoner of war camp in an area that is now occupied by the Russians, and mm -hmm. talks about having to actually like the weird situation of having to defend the Germans from the Russians, even though the Russians are the Allies. Yeah. Um, and sort of being like, what, what am I what trying to do? on here? Yeah. So, so yes, treating German soldiers. And also having mm -hmm. just a very multinational... Um, mm. The Poles. Yes. Oh, now my, my mother loved it when she got to nurse a Pole. Really? Yeah, the Polish servicemen were like, oh. Because they were, they, because they were volunteers. Her perception was they were all rather glamorous and gorgeous, the, oh. the Polish. And they, they were mostly, they came over and were like airmen and so on. And yeah, yeah. I mean, yes. So it was like, oh, great when you got um, a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous Polishman. Polish. Yeah. yeah. And actually, um, Mary has a gorgeous Polish, Polish man for a while. Does yeah. she? And I mean, another interesting part of, the, of her diaries is her experience as a young unmarried woman in the war, you know, no. I, I guess a lot of the plot of the, of the diaries comes from um, all of her different relationships and, and all of the, um, the the men that she meets and she sort of yeah. thinks, do I like this person, do I not like this person, and, yeah. and you know, she has a French man who then goes off to join the resistance Ooh. and, wow. um, 
she, go, she goes out with a medical officer for a bit, the uh -huh. medical officer who she works with, and uh -huh. talks about being in the, um, the office making cocoa on the stove. <gasps> That's exactly <laughs> what, what Grandma did! <laughs> So, um, my mother, she, she used to, the medical students would come round, and the young doctors, um, and she was night, a night sister at this point, yeah. so she, she was, in fact, you could be responsible for like half the hospital as a newly trained nurse, yeah. a nurse you became a sister, and as a night sister, then you, like, there's, there'd be very few other people on, and you had, so these medical students would come around, and she, and young doctors, and she'd make them cocoa in the little ward kitchen, because yes. they were up all night and very tired, and they were just young men, yeah. you know, like, in the early 20s. You also know? flung into also this. Also flung uh, into this. And huge responsibility. Huge responsibility. And so, yes, she, she, she would make him cocoa, uh, make him cocoa. And uh, there was one particular one that would like jump and sit on top of a, like on top of a cupboard and like would be full of theories and ideas and could argue that, that black was white and everyone would like believe him. And then like the next day they'd work out, no, actually, he's just wrong. He's just wrong. <laughs> he was completely convincing. And she, she was rather fond of him, and you will guess where that's going. He then moved on to another, because they moved between these sector hospitals, yeah. and they were, she was moving and he was moving, but then they, when they were subsequently reunited and started going out. And War this is, is really this is strange for relationships. It really is. Because it brings this kind of like speed urgency, and, inten urgency yeah. and intensity, yes. And um, yes, people rushed into commitments and relationships that they might have taken more time about yeah. in I mean, time. Mary receives a proposal after seeing a man for 14 days. She met him 14 days ago as a patient. Yeah. And then, you know, two yeah. weeks later, he, yeah. he's proposing to her because he doesn't know if he's ever going to see her again. Exactly. And, and your grandmother had exactly the same, same experience. And it wasn't like you could just easily My father keep in touch. Uh, was not her first proposal. Yeah. yeah. And wasn't there something to do with the cocoa um, having a skin on it? And she put a skin on it to try and... But it turned out that he really liked the skin on the cocoa. Am I making this up? No, no, you. I think you're right. Yeah, and she she sort of didn't like him at first, so she made him because she with was a bit arrogant, and he and get, so yeah, she gave him the one with the skin in it, and actually he was actually delighted and yes, complimented her on her lovely cocoa and skin, <laughs> yeah. and obviously worked his way into uh, her favour. He yeah. did, and he was itching to be able to join up, but as a, when you were a medical student you weren't allowed, that you were forbidden to join the army until you were qualified. Because they're so desperate. Because they're so desperate to use a qualified doctor. So you couldn't like opt out of your medical training and go and just be a soldier. It's like you had to stay and complete your training and, yeah. and then go out and join the Royal Army Medical Corps. And Mary has the same um, sheet where she's on the front and she's meeting these new MOs, medical officers, who are coming out, who are like really desperately eager and keen to join the fighting, yes. um, to sort of join in after all of these years where they haven't been able to, yes. and also but all, being in a bit of a difficult position of sort yeah. of knowing what these very young men, and that she was still herself a very young woman, yeah. knowing what they're about to get themselves into and sort of thinking, ah, are they going to cope at a casualty station, yeah. um, which were the, the casualty stations were, were right on in the fighting, yeah. whereas the, the field hospitals were a bit further away from it. If you think about like someone like your grandfather, like all his people who've been at school with, they all got to join up like more or less well earlier in the war. And quite a lot of his school friends had died by the time when he was having to plow on through his medical training. That's like five years yes. long, and, and thinking, "Gosh, I should be doing. I should be out there doing this." And so it was like I think it was 1943 before he, he was fully qualified and could actually you know go out and join in and he felt very like really really uncomfortable through those yes. four years when his so other 18 year olds had gone straight had out gone straight of the war yeah and and that was very you'd think that people would think oh good i'm safe because i'm a medical student but it was quite the opposite, the opposite yeah there was, i guess there was a lot of cultural and social expectation that you would go as well um yeah she talks about um Mary, yeah. um, about because obviously some people were 
conscientious objectors mm-hmm. or didn't or you know, yeah. tried to avoid being part of the war, but they were still sort of roped in, and her hospital mm. was guarded by a sort of motley band of, of, of people who didn't want to be in the fighting, but yeah. still kind of had to participate in some way. Yeah, it really well, it affected everyone. Didn't and it? becoming like um, uh, a medical orderly or an ambulance driver or that sort of thing was one of the things that you could do as a conscientious yeah. objector that and was still, sort of a valid, still valid. contribute. There's some so some of the conscientious objectors didn't want to do that because they felt they were just even by doing that they were sustaining the war the war 